Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, August 3rd, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news on the market front. It's down in Asia, mixed in Europe, mixed in the U.S., oil down a little bit, gold up a little bit, nothing moving a lot. Middle of the summer, people are on a vacation state of mind. Not a lot of action going on out there. But over here in the States, a Dow, poof, another record-breaking day, seven in a row. That's right. And it was going up higher before the news came out that special FBI guy, Mueller, you know, that they brought in to see what Trump did with them Russians. Well, here it is. Wall Street Journal reported just minutes before the market closed that special counsel Robert Mueller impaneled a grand jury in his investigation into Russia's involvement in the U.S. election. Let's get this straight. Hillary Clinton lost because she's Hillary. Could you get that in your head? And folks, this is my legacy, Obama kept saying as he went around the nation BSing like he did when he got his way into office, saying, folks, if you don't vote for me, folks, you're not going to keep my legacy going. So you know what they said about Obama's legacy? Hey, here's to you. Yep. The Democrats, they lost the House of Representatives. They lost the Senate. They lost state houses all over the country. Had nothing to do with the Russians. It had to do with eight years of Obama. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. And that's what they did. It's the economy, stupid. We were the only magazine in the world that we know of that in May of 2016 forecast Trump to win because of the actions of Obama and people couldn't stand Hillary Clinton and had nothing to do with you being a woman. It had to be with who you are, who your husband is, and all those Black people that didn't vote for you because of all the people that went to jail under Bill Clinton and what they showed in those hacked emails about all the dough you took getting paid off that you called speeches for the Goldman Sachs gang and everybody else. So anyway, now you're going to see a lot of turmoil in the market possibly because every day the prostitute media is going to keep going with the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Anyway, tomorrow's the big day. What are the numbers going to look like with the jobs report? So that's what the markets are waiting for, too. We're just on hold. It's more of the same. Not a lot going on. On to the crude oil price level. It went down a little bit because, hey, production went up a little bit over there in the OPEC country. Same old story. Yeah, they're using more gasoline, but there's more supply than demand. What you see is what it is, $45, $40 to $50, possibly $60 tops. That's the range, but companies are saying they can make dough at 50 So if they're making more money at 50 more rigs, more pumping, they got to keep it going. So what you see is what it is, gold prices. Well, gold's not doing much of anything. It's trading in that $1,300, $1,200 range. The downside risk, as we see, is minimal compared to the upside potential. And the upside potential only happens when gold hits over 1400 and stays there for a while. Then it moves, we believe, a spike toward 2000 But in the meantime, check it out. Trend alert. Trend alert. It may be as big as gold and silver and it may be going on for a long time. Hey, you know how they say on your dollar bill, in God we trust? Well, know in God we trust to trust. Cryptocurrency trend to grow. That's right. You're going to read in your trends journal, your trend alert that just went out today, what you won't read anywhere else, money back guaranteed, where you're going to see cryptocurrencies going, why they're going to keep going in this direction, and along with gold, an asset to get away from those fiat cur currencies. But again, with no in God we trust to trust, it's becoming cashless. So people don't have an emotional 
nationalistic attachment to their coin of the realm. And they see what these fiat currencies are digital currencies printed on nothing and backed by nothing. Why not go crypto? So where's crypto going? Read your trend alert. Moving on to some other news. Wall Street climbing sharply skips Washington soap opera. None of the soap opera in Washington matters, said Frank Sullivan, chief executive of RPM, international Cleveland-based maker of specialty coatings and sealants like Rust-Oleum. Nobody in business cares about who talked to who in Russia. You got it, Mr. Sullivan, except the low-life prostitute media and all the media whores that keep say- selling Let's hate Russia. Why is it so bad that Trump, if he did, talked to Russia and wants to make peace with Putin? Ah, it's bad for the military-industrial complex and those six psychopaths called neocons, Clintons, Bushes, and Obamas. Plus, 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 Lindsay, did you come out of the closet yet, Graham? And John and Sane McCain, and one after another. Ah, some more economic news. Hungry investors pile into first Iraq bond sale in more than a decade. Ah, Iraq, yep. Hungry investors, how about gamblers looking for a return on their dough and taking a shot on this? But then you read how they write about this in the Financial Times, and it gives prostitutes the worthy name of putting out because they get paid to put out, just like any good whore would do. The $1 billion bond, which matures in 2023, has brought in $6.6 billion of orders by yesterday afternoon. It goes on to say, the country is struggling to overcome years of international strife that followed the 2003 U.S.-led invasion. Isn't that nice? U.S.-led invasion. An illegal war based on lies that not one of you little clowns will call the murderers out for starting. You little low-life cowards, a country of cowards, one after another. Where's Blair? Where's Bush? Where's Dick? Oh, I have to be proper. I know people get upset when I'm not proper. Penis Cheney and Colin down the crapper Powell for selling us this war. And they write it like this. The country struggling to overcome years of internal strife. Massacre. Millions killed. Bombs dropped. Three trillion dollars of our dough spent for murder. Hey, let's sell bonds. Let's take a risk. Maybe we can make a couple of bucks. You scum. Ah, and speaking of which, Apple faces tests of strategy in China and U.S., Double-digit growth in America and Europe helped to sustain Apple's performance in the June quarter, but greater China remains a problem with revenues down 10% year-on-year because a bunch of Chinese companies are moving in and you look at our top trends for 2017. Silicon Valley, Rust Belt 2.0. That's right. The United States under Clinton under Bush, folks, you know what Bush did? You didn't know this, did you? China got into the World Trade Organization about two weeks after 9-11 when no one was watching, and Clinton opened the doors for them to come in. That's right. So what they did, the deal is this. If you want to manufacture anything over there, you got to give them all your technology, and you can't own 100% of the company. No, 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 you got to use a Chinese manufacturer. So they stole all our technology. They were just making shirts and shoes and belts and underwears. And now, technology. And that's where they're putting their money. Buy and sell China. The business of China is business. The business of America is bombs, is Occupying other countries. Hey, them Russians, I'll tell you what, man, we got to stop them. They're international aggression. They're in two countries, Vietnam and Syria. That's right, they got bases over there. The United States only has bases in 80 countries and about 800 of them. But the scum media doesn't report it like that. 
All they're doing us is selling hate. That's all they're doing because they're a bunch sick son of a bitches. Ah. White House eyes trade fight with China. The Trump administration is considering its first big trade action against Beijing with officials engaged in, quote, serious discussions, end quote, about launching a probe into a Chinese intellectual property regime that requires foreign companies to transfer technology to local subsidiaries and partners. Duh! How long have we been saying that? Subscribers to the Trends Journal know we've been saying this for a decade and more. And now it's finally coming out. They sold us out. What do you think they give that money to the Clinton Foundation for? Their payoffs. Their bribes. That's why they lost the election, because she's a disgusting individual. And you know me, I didn't vote for either of them, didn't vote in this election. I don't support murderers and thieves, Republicans and Democrats. Their party's not my party. It's a sick party. All you have to do is look at the people in it. You like Pelosi? Maybe you like little Chucky Schumer. I know. Paulie Eddie Munster Ryan's your kind of guy. Oh, yeah, Mitch McConnell, a brilliant individual. Anyway, going back, this is the story. And moving on, China-India... Land standoff in Himalayas escalates. Keep your eye on this. This is heating up and heating up. The economy in India is not doing so well right now. With the new taxes that just came on, they just announced that they're going to lower interest rates. In India's central banks cuts rates down after slowdown. And then remember, last November 8th, the same day as the election in the United States, they called in 86% of the Indian currencies. So now you have destabilization there. When all else fails, they take you to war. So things are heating up. Keep your eye on it. Yep. And some good news. Under Trump, shell of a force in Syria swiftly lost CIA aid. This is the way the New York slime, the toilet of paper, writes this story. Washington. The end came quickly for one of the costliest covert action programs in the history of the CIA. During a White House briefing early last month, the CIA director, Mike Pompeo, recommended to President Trump that he shut down a four-year-old effort to arm and train Syrian rebels. Ah. The president swiftly ended the program. The rebel army was by then a shell. You ready for this? Hollowed out by more than a year of bombing by Russian planes and confined to over-shrinking patches of Syria that government troops had not reconquered. How's that for... Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! More than $1 billion spent of our money as this nation's rotting. Russians did it? Russians didn't do it. This has been going on for four years. The Russians just got there, what do they say, a year they've been doing this? Don't you remember back when they gave them 500 million of our bucks and they traded, trained a group that fell apart real quick and Al-Qaeda, yeah, got all the weaponry? And they make it sound like a negative. This is a positive for Trump. Bravo for Trump. And this guy Pompeo, man, don't like a lot of things that he says, but let's give him credit for that. I haven't seen this kind of action before coming from the last administrations, this is positive. Just as it's positive that there's a peace going on in terms of no bombs away over Syria that Putin and Trump came to an agreement with at the G20 meeting. These are positives. Why not promote those? 
because your prostitute selling war and the New York slime is the prime seller of propaganda, lest you forget those aluminum tubes and yellow cakes that they were selling that Saddam Hussein had building his weapons of mass destruction. And as the man that launched Occupy Peace, .us, this is another positive coming from Trump. Trump says U.S. is losing in Afghanistan. Yeah, no kidding. He wants to command the fire. Yes, I see this guy, General John Nicholson, Jr., the 17th commander of the U.S. occupied Afghanistan. That's right, 17 and 16 years, doing pretty good. And Trump is saying, is this thing worth it? Bravo. But Trump must be wrong. There's no war in Afghanistan. Don't you remember what Obama said? We've pushed the Taliban out of their strongholds. And by the end of the next year, America's war in Afghanistan will be over. So Trump is pushing back from his advisors that want him to escalate the war. Good for you. That's another positive. And you know the motto of the Trends Journal, think for yourself. We don't tell you what to think, but here's what I think. President backs a plan to curtail legal migration. 50% cuts by 10th year. I'm all in favor of it. No more people in this country. We've got over 320 million. Hey, 20,000 just were hunting for a job over there in uh, Illinois with Amazon. Yeah, I paid a grand total of about 12 bucks an hour, a little change plus. Yeah, 62.50 a week, and you get a hernia, listing all that stuff and running back and forth. I mean, what, what, what is this country de you know, degraded to? You want more people? You can't take care of your own? Open up your house. Can't feed your family? Bring more in. Let's go back to the 1930s immigration policy. No people until we get back on our feet. We have an opiate crisis raging through this country like we've never seen. Brought to you by Big Pharma. Not making that up. Here's the fact, folks. You can thank Bill Clinton for this one. He's the one that allowed these drug ads to be placed on TV. A new report shows that more than one in three Americans got a prescription for opiate painkillers in 2015. Yeah, plus the other ones that got them uh, illegally. So, yeah, let's get America back on its feet first and then open our doors. This is Gerald Salenti. And that's some of today's trends.